Hi students, uh, here this is Dr. Vijay along with Dr. Heyman. We are faculty for medical oncology at Doc Tutorials. And today with us is Dr. Annie who has secured her uh, NEAT SS rank 24 and uh, we are having a small chat with her. Hi, Dr. Annie. Hi, sir. Hi. So uh, to start with, let us know how your MBBS, your MD days and what is, where are you from? A small introduction about you. Sir, uh, I belong to the uh, third batch of Calicut Medical College, Kerala. Yeah. I did uh, my MBBS, uh, MD, and it's like uh, all my education was in Kerala, basically. So uh, I did my MD from uh, Government Medical College to Andrum, MD Radiation Oncology. And after that, uh, I was a little bit confused, like uh, to pursue whether the radiation or to continue in radiation oncology or like medical oncology. But then uh, there were things which uh, came up. Like I had a, a kind of jobless period in between. I my assessment got delayed a bit for two months. So that is when I attended a few yeah. interviews. And, and uh, Kerala, uh, there are some job constraints in radiation oncology. I'm not like I'm being very frank here. Uh, it's not to demotivate anyone, but still uh, we should understand things like in, we are like uh, kind of machine dependent work in radiation oncology. So. Uh, wherever I went, they were they were telling me like you have opportunities in medical oncology, but uh, radiation oncology we currently have a staff. So I had a two months period, only two months period. But at that time, one of my friend, uh, Dr. Tina, she got in uh, Stanley Medical College. So that kind of inspired me a lot. Uh, I thought like next year I shouldn't be <laughs> purposeless. I have one year researchship uh, before me. So I thought I should utilize at least my time in my department and I should thank the whole department. In fact, uh, they were like kind of very cooperative and they allowed me to study a lot. I mean, after, after OP, they didn't give me much work or anything. And I was Wonderful. free to study. So uh, I used to go to the library after my OP. And that is how, was, how it was. So how was Dr. Tutorials into you? Uh, how did you come to know what was the starting from you? Yeah, so uh, Dr. Tutorial actually, it was uh, Dr. Rahul Raji was my director at uh, Calicut Medical College. I mean, I was his house surgeon while he was a second year PG. And uh, I used to ask him doubts from the, those days itself. Like, he is the one who initially joined me to DAMS coaching center at that time. And uh, then uh, I had his uh, number saved in my phone. And I once I saw his status uh, about Dr. Tutorial and I asked him, like I am preparing for this, I want kind of like test series kind of something. I didn't. I initially I didn't want to get any videos or like lecture classes or anything. I thought I was okay. I'm reading. I just wanted to test my knowledge in like how I'm doing and all that. So initially I subscribed to the test series package, and that is how I came to know about. Uh, I contacted Dr. Rahul Raji, and he said that uh, recordings are going on for medical oncology at that time. That was around September or like at that time so, so initially i started writing the test series test, so the series of li test series of dr tutorials uh, so uh, he was not very serious at that time then the pattern change came uh, pattern change was one big uh, like serious thing which happened like i was thinking uh, if it is harrison based next year then I, I i cannot make it because it is completely new and very vast so i was my pace increased only after that of study and then i just uh, initially i was uh, giving the test so that i was cal calculating like this uh, like uh, if i become uh, rank like within 20 in that uh, doctor tutorials uh, like that uh, some three or four institutions might be there so if i become topper in like if i fall within 20 i can make it to uh, top 100 for medical oncology so I, i'll be definitely getting this year that's how i calculated and even if uh, like and uh, initially I started like that then I, my rank was fluctuating I mean sometimes I came like 16 sometimes it was 7 sometimes it was like 12 like but I made sure that it was below 20 I mean rank falls with, within 20 and that kind of worked I guess because initially then then there was like one free uh, subscription period for top tutorials that is when I saw the videos actually uh, and I thought there are certain areas which I was not very sure of, especially hematology. And those videos were very, very good. 
so i took the complete package like the including the videos and question pack and that is how i started with like serious preparation then that was around september october time and uh, after that it was easier for me because uh, reading devita was like uh, i felt very difficult sir i used to read only the tables and the pictures mainly but uh, you people helped me a lot in that because you already read it and you took the classes and also the management was covered with nccn based guidelines so i could skip reading devita and nccn because of your classes so that was very it's very very useful actually uh, some of my colleagues are starting to prepare i was telling them the same point because reading with we have to read devita anyway uh, to crack a neat neat ss so all my seniors told me that but i was finding it personally difficult to read that devita as such but uh, in video lectures almost all the points were covered like important points and mcq points everything was covered so uh, i felt dr tony said me in that way maybe right uh, yes uh, so actually that's what we thought because uh, reading devita was impossible to me uh, i remember my preparation as such uh, i uh, got the book but i did not open it because once i opened and a uh, lot of statistic lot of numbers uh, yes. data it was kind of impossible to kind of assimilate that so probably yes. that's when we started thinking that uh, we should kind of make it simpler and that is what we try doing in videos and also we try to give a more clinical approach as such that uh, you go by a case and like how a case goes by and how probably you are going to evaluate a case and then how do you manage the case that is what we focused during the video uh, what about the elit test discussion that we've had uh, about the test series one the test series were done and uh, you were part of the discussions definitely i made a point that uh, like whatever mistakes i made i gave it a like set special attention because i tend to make the mistake same mistakes again because that concept was not clear so what i did was to write it in a different ink like red or something like that which the points which i made a mistake and then uh, also the iniss which i gave at uh, in december 7 on december 7 like uh, that exam was kind of very difficult for me but i made a lot of mistakes there and i thought like and also i attended the recall session and uh, that recall session uh, was very useful because the same questions were repeated again and that was useful and uh, other test discussions were also like it was not dealing only with the like core subject but also some extra points like recent advances uh, fda approved drugs which were recently approved all that so all those things which we can't find in uh, textbooks where it dealt with in those lectures so that was useful right uh, that's what uh... uh doing those recall sessions also we never realized that probably the same thing could come yes, yes. seriously sir uh, like i think uh, uh you uploaded that uh, pdf or uh, day before the exam or something like that so right right that was really really useful because uh, i was rushing through all those things and uh, all those uh, images we put at the last moment and suddenly i came across this pdf and i was just skipping through those uh, questions and right. all the eight to 10 10 questions like we could get directly like they right. save a lot of time as well and right. we were very sure that this is the correct answer so kind right. of very very lucky on that also you actually focus on a very important point that all other students who are listening to this kind of need to pay attention so yes. the mistakes we do during the test series all of us do whenever we are attempting tests uh, none of us get uh, complete out of out right Yes. So any mistake with that do going back focusing on the mistake trying to make that concept clear is very important and that always needs an additional effort and that should be done because without which you are just going to make the same mistake again and again yes. and when uh, say a question comes in the exam you tend to get demotivated. Yes. Trying to make sure that you have a pattern on sticking to a schedule trying to answer the test series on time. Uh, what mistakes are done going back rectify making the concept clear i think you have been on the right path and that is where your effort can be seen clearly so a point about neat ss exam you already mentioned there are few repeats but what else the paper probably looked at you have have you given the last year's neat exam and how probably different this was yes sir actually i had given the neat ss exam last year also uh, my rank was around 360 something i mean i could attempt being a like pass out at that time 
uh, I could attempt uh, around 77 questions at that time. Uh, I made many mistakes. I don't know. Uh, like I was not very serious in the preparation that time. But this time I wrote only 81 questions. Just four questions extra. So uh, without any preparation, I could attempt 77 at that time. But with preparation, with full-on preparation, I could attempt only 81 questions this time. That was what I felt uh, like the difficulty level, if in simple words, that is it. So it is not an easy exam to uh, attempt freehand. So uh, what all were the questions? Like it, I couldn't even remember the many of the options actually. Uh, and uh, many of the questions were descriptive uh, type. It was not one-liners. Uh, many of them were clinical based. And if you know the IHC and uh, basic stuff, we can answer many questions. Like IHC were asked in many of the questions. And um, uh, there was one question about L aspartanase and L aspartanase. Usually they ask what is the side effect of L aspartanase or what is this and what causes this, uh, which drug causes this. It will be like direct question. But this was like a CT was showed and uh, we had to identify that it is pancreatitis with a pseudosis and then uh, guess the drug. So only if you know like one or two things, we can answer one question. It was like that. Right. So. I took a lot of time to read the questions and understand and keep the question. Like I couldn't complete it. After completing one round of that 40 questions, I had only 12 minutes left. So time management also, that is where I said that uh, those direct questions really helped. Right. So, uh, time was like just sufficient uh, to uh, attempt these questions. Uh, and it was kind of difficult because uh, as you know, that like, it is a very low, low scoring exam. Uh, even the top marks are, I scored only 206. That is only 50% of the uh, total marks. So it is a low scoring exam, but I could assess it at that time because I understood that because I sat for the INISS. INISS was also not very high scoring. It was a very low scoring exam. Yeah. Uh, so students but, actually tend to keep asking, how much questions do you need to yes, attempt yes. in the exam to get a good score? How less probably is a bad thing? So it is actually extremely subjective. It's on that day, probably during the paper, you start to realize that if you have done a good, decent preparation and probably you find the exam to be slightly more difficult, then probably attempting all questions is not a good thing to do. Not a good okay. thing at all. Okay. Because so probably that is where you are extremely wise in making sure that once you knew definitely you had end of answered it well, once probably you could understand like how uh, the CT uh, probably you worked in medicine and medical oncology to an extent where you start learning to see the CT and you have an idea to guess that this is uh, pancreatitis and uh, coming to an answer to that. So from factual questions in the past, I think last minute says things have drastically changed to a more clinical approach based, a highly concept based uh, uh, exam and that is what probably we are looking ahead. Uh, Ani, thank you for joining us. Before we go, uh, you are from Trivandrum. You have done your uh, studies there and I think you will be joining us in Trivandrum. A great institute, a beautiful institute and a wonderful place to work in. Uh, we wish you all the best for this and uh, stay in touch and uh, like what you told about Rahul Rajesh, sir, I want to stress again, he's been an inspiration to all of us. He's been a guide. The energy level that he maintains is very difficult to match with us by us and sometimes Every time he's there for the students, every time he's mentoring them, every time he's there for us when we have a, a query and exactly how to go about things and probably we are stuck on uh, how to prepare and how to guide us. So uh, his passion is never ending and uh, we should learn at least something from him. I think that is uh, enough. And uh, definitely Rahul Raju sir, big thumbs up to you. Thank you for uh, being there for us as well. And that's from Annie. Congratulations once again. And thank you for joining us today.